Hey, this is Paul, the friendly reviewer, for your review of the Pro Book Pop Up Book Effects for Final Cut Pro X by Pixel Film Studios. So, before we begin, please make sure to check out the description below for any updates or links that I talk about in the video. Also, make sure to subscribe if you want to watch more videos just like this one. So this is a pretty lengthy video that I'm going to go through and show you how to set up a page or actually a couple pages in this pop-up book and I'm going to go through and talk through the pros and cons of the different settings as I go through it and maybe a couple little bugs that I found. If you don't want to sit through that whole thing, I'm going to give you the summary now so you don't have to kind of waste your time here with me. And if you're intrigued enough, you can go through and watch the whole tutorial and explanation as I go through it. So. A couple of notes here. Uh, number one, the price. It's actually fairly cheap if you're going to use it. If you think it looks cool and don't use it, it's obviously very expensive for that. But if you do a handful of videos with it, the price isn't that bad. I would say that if you're doing a paid video, you're probably going to recoup that cost pretty quickly. Now as far as the ease of use. I would say that the different control settings are very easy, the sliders, scaling, moving everything around, pretty simple. Not that hard to use. Now as far as actually getting to look good though, I do think that you need a bit of an artistic eye to get them scaled, put in the right places, get the pictures, the correct ones, maybe if you're going to draw them yourselves, the transparencies around them, and get everything set up, and then also an RTI for the camera view and how that pans across it. And if it just kind of is zoomed out and you have little pictures on there, it's gonna look cheap. But if you really get the whole field of view filled up with these different images popping up, if you get them to look right and everything, with the lighting effects, it really looks like a nice effect. I will say though that this does not look as nice as what I've seen for some of the After Effects of, uh, versions of pop-up books where there's complex backgrounds, maybe some textures and different things on the pages, but for the money, this is a pretty good deal. Now let's get into the detailed review. First of all, I'm running Final Cut Pro X version 10.3.2 on a late model 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro running macOS Sierra version 10.12.3. After purchasing it on the Pixel Film Studio website, you'll receive an email with a link to download the product. There are instructions included to install the product. I had to both run the installation file and I also had to manually copy the files into the Final Cut Pro X generators folder. So after installing it when you open up Final Cut Pro X, you can go over to the generator section and you'll find it under there where it'll say Pixel Film Studios and you'll see pop up. Look. Under there you'll see four different generators. The first one is cover and scene. The second one is cover scene scene, so one cover and then one scene and then flipping the page to another scene. You'll just have a single scene where there's no flipping of pages. And then scene scene, which has two scenes but no cover and you just have one flip of the pages. So you can take one and you can drop it down into the timeline and then you can easily expand it to whatever size you'd like. And it'll just kind of stretch the whole thing out. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is the cover. So the first thing to note is you can go down by inspecting the different properties and find where you can change the color of the cover. You can go through and change this to any color that you'd like. There's just a multitude of colors to pick from. I'm going to go with a, a bluish color for this example. Now one note on this is, is if you pull down the cover scene generator and put it in there and you go to the cover selection, I have not been able to find how to change the color. It seems to be missing, so hopefully this is something that they'll fix soon. I've sent them an email about this, but I haven't been able to find where you can change the color of the cover unless it's in some hidden spot. But anyways, let's go back to the one that you could see. So you can also change the other properties on there. So you can see that there's some different text boxes. So if you go to the, the title text box, you can change that. You can add different number of lines. So we'll type something else in there. 
just generically to show you how this works. So on here, there's not a lot of controls. You can change the X and Y position of them, so move it up and down on the cover or side to side. You can also change the subtitle, and you can also change the author. There's not a lot of controls here. Luckily, you can get past that by actually going to the text and clicking on it, and that's gonna bring up a lot more options for you. This is gonna allow you to scale the text, because really the subtitle and the author is extremely small on here. So pick the font that you would like, and then you can move on from there. Now something to note, if you start getting into something like a 3D fancy text, you might have some issues where it might show up on the back of it. And you don't want to do that. So if you're playing around with any sort of fancy text, make sure to open up the book and make sure that it's not causing you some sort of issue where it's going to show through. So that's just my little tip for you. But other than that, the different flat texts seem to work pretty well. Now, once you go into the uh, other parts here, you can see that you can change the color of the extra pages, so the kind of the thickness of the book. We'll change it to a little bit of a darker gray here. But you can change it to any color you'd like. You can also see there's other settings for the environment. We can also change that to any color we like here. And that's gonna put it all around there. And you can also change the reflectivity of the environment. So that's gonna kind of put a mirrorish or reflective surface down there as it opens up and reflects off there. You can also change the settings with a little bit of a vignetting around there. So you can change the shape and how dark it is. And this is something you can apply during this or quite frankly, if you want to, you can just go apply that afterwards with a different feature um, separate that came with Final Cut Pro. Now, once we get in the inside, you're gonna see some notable things such as the lighting. So this is a pretty cool feature. You put the light source there and it's gonna generate shadows. You can also soften those shadows or change where the light source is at. This does make it look a lot better and nicer, especially whenever you're using different shapes and dropping those into those drop zones, and you'll see the light kind of go around them. So I'd say this is a pretty nice effect here. Next thing you can do is go and change the color of the pages to whatever you'd like. I've not figured out how to put any sort of texture or anything. Just picking a single color is all I've been able to do here. So we're gonna go with kind of two different shades of green here. The next thing you can do is go through and select your media to drop in the drop zones. There are five on each side. So you go down and you can pick those. Now the first thing to note is that it's expecting pictures in the widescreen format. If you don't have it, it could crop them. So if you look at that square that I put up first, you can see it over in the media side over there and it is cropping the top and bottom of it and so that's that's an issue if you want this to get work properly you need to use something like PowerPoint affinity or some other different tool to create it with transparency on the sides and put it in a widescreen format so it doesn't crop it this is a little bit of a nuisance or annoyance but it's a very easy thing to get around so you can see here I just put a person a bike and you see the square there and it's doing some cropping to the bike as well on the sides. So just keep that in mind that you're gonna to have to do that one extra step to get this to work. Now I'm gonna delete these so we can put some scene up that looks decent. Now, just one comment here too. If you want the um, to use less pictures, you can either use a blank picture to make it go away or you can just scale the picture all the way down to zero and the drop zone will just disappear. So you can use either one. It doesn't really matter if you don't want to use all 10 of the different drop zones. 
in this effect or generator. Now to set up this page. So I'm going to play this in fast forward so I don't want to bore you and get this going. So we're going to set up a scene with a bunch of trees so I'm going to drop these in, in the drop zones. As you can see here, a couple tips for you. You want to put the different objects and pictures in there in a way that your eye cannot see straight through the whole book to the environment in the background. It's going to look like a very cheap effect if you just have a couple little pictures on this book that are flipping up and it's really not going to be what you're looking for. So you have to kind of have a little bit of an artistic eye here as you go through and scale and position the trees or the figures that you have to make it look good. You will notice though that as you move around and the transparency around the pictures, the light source does look very nice with those shadows and really adds a lot to it. You can see that you can also scale it separately in the different directions and that really helps to fill it in and you can also move it kind of back and forth and side to side. Now this is a little note here, if you make it too big, what you're going to have is you're going to see that it's going to, the image is going to pop through on the next page whenever it flips through, so make sure that if you're scaling things around and you have multiple scenes, that you flip pages occasionally and make sure that it's not bleeding over to the next page. So as we go through and make these changes, you can see that it's starting to fill in and look pretty nice here. The next thing here is I'm going to move this logo and use some keyframing so we can have the logo actually move as the camera pans across. So set up keyframe, put it in a different location, set up another keyframe and get it to where you'd like it to go. And then you'll get that effect of it moving as the pages turn. So now you can see the scene is all set up. And now it's time to check out the camera. So you can move the camera around from the start position to the end position. So if you want to, you can move the angle of the camera. So this is kind of a time down look or more of a straight on look. I will say that there seems to be some sort of bug. You need to get too sharp of an angle and the front pictures look a little bit funny, but that angle probably isn't that useful to begin with. You can also move the start and stop position of the cameras. So you can see I'm gonna can either raise it up or drop it down here. You can also use these little bit of guidelines to see where the camera is going to start and stop with the green and the red, if that helps you out. And if you wanted to, you can expand these and break out the individual rotations and positions as well. I find that the defaults are all right, but I like to drop the angle down to 100 degrees and also lower everything so it really fills up the full frame so it doesn't look like a little picture book as it's zooming across. And you can see here it is playing as it's painting across from the start to the end. Now here I'm going to use some building images to set up the second page. So again, I'm kind of going with the same theme where I'm putting a skyline in the back to make sure it really blocks your view as you look through. So there's not any part. You can just kind of stare through and see all the way back to the scenery in the background to make it look nice. And I'm just going to quickly just position these buildings around, but normally there'd be probably something else in there to keep your eye, some main character or figure or something, but this is just a bunch of buildings. And I also use gray for the pages. I like to have the pages a slightly different color so you can see the separation. So after all that, you can see here it is playing through with the full scene effect. You can see the logo moving across. You can see the shadows. You can see here that once it gets about halfway, it's going to flip. It's going to fold the pictures down, fold the other ones up, and give you this nice effect of this pop-up book, which looks pretty nice. One last little tip that I have is to make sure to render your videos using this effect after you create your pop-up books and then move it into a different project. This is going to keep your system running up and a little bit faster. Also, if you're only using images and no media in there, you can just reverse them around if you want to, especially if you're doing just a single scene. 
go forward to back and back to forward and do different things and it's going to speed up your time a lot quicker. One of the downsides of this is if you're going to put multiple of them together and you want it to look like page after page after page, flipping you're going to have to repeat creating those pages because you can't just copy the settings from one of the generators to the other. So you have to be creative with that so that is a little bit of annoyance. Other than that, I'd say that this is a good value if you're going to use it. You have to have a bit of an artsy eye to get good results with it, but it is a pretty good little effects for the price. So this has been Paul, the friendly reviewer for your review of the ProBook Pop-Up Book Effect by Pixel Film Studios. Thank you for watching.